Well, I think that that slides perfectly into our final question, which is uh, my final question from now on uh, for everybody that comes on this podcast, because we talk to so many interesting people. We love what's interesting about you, but we don't we don't quite understand what makes a person interesting. So, Evan, what makes a person interesting in your estimation? I think the simplest answer is is obsession, fascination. People who go like you're you're just talking about I you're interested in the French and Indian War, and I'm like, I, I want to know more about that. Like that, because <laughs> because and, and earlier you told me about the teachers that changed you. The teachers that changed me were the ones that were so obsessed about the the, the subject they were teaching that I was infected with that enthusiasm. You know, I, I declared an archaeology minor at BU because of one one guy. You know, I, I, that wasn't on my radar, yeah. but like he got me so into it. Now it's a now it's a it's a lifelong passion that you know. And so, what makes people interesting is that thing in us that just makes us go way deeper on something niche or not that we can't get enough of. I love that, and doesn't matter what it is. If you're telling me about it, and I see that in your eyes. I'm hooked. It's a good answer. I think oh, we're, such we're a on good board answer. with that. that is really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's come up. That's come up in so many different uh, contexts where it's like, hey, if somebody is almost borderline unhealthily obsessed with something, that is somebody you want to yes. talk to because there's something yes, there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think someone who can overcome, this is going to get weirdly real. I think someone who can overcome all that life is thrown at them and rise above it and be a better person. Because I feel like a lot of people are just given easy lives and they become good people and that is great, obviously. Uh, they could also become bad people, but we're staying positive. But the people who have just been absolutely shat on <laughs> and had a very rough life who then go <laughs> on to be good people uh, and, and, and rise above that, uh, not speaking from any experience of my own, I, I, I've had an incredibly cushy life, all things considered. Uh, to me, that every time I hear about someone like that or meet someone like that, I'm, I'm perpetually fascinated because it feels like the easy thing to do would be to <laughs> be awful in the same way that life has been awful to you. So when I see someone who doesn't do that, I feel like I'm I'm always very inspired and, and always very interested. Mm -hmm. It does seem like the type of person they would, you know, make a movie about. <laughs> like yeah. It's kind of like a, a hero's journey sort of thing is going into the abyss and yeah. then coming out of it. Coming out of it um, a bit of person. being evil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Kevin Lieber, Vsauce 2. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> I think there's two ways to look at it. One in the form of like content and what we do. And then two in the form of actual personal connections with people. And one, I think, which is something that I've, I've thought about a lot, is that you kind of need to have something that sets you apart, whether that be, you know, funny facial hair or an accent or something or like some bit that you fall back on that people will will recognize and uh, latch onto and that's the way especially if you're looking into building a, a business as an influencer that's something that you really should put more thought into because if you're just sitting there in front of a computer and you've got you're just regular in every single way you've got nothing that really encourages people to stick around or i guess keeps people from scrolling to the next video on tiktok um and you're not really going to get too far uh, but I guess in more terms of the personal thing, which is, I think the real question, um, and it's tough, it's tough. I, I think, um, I think I, I've started to meet more people through this job that I've become friendly with, but at the end of the day, uh, the people who I talk to the most are the people who are kind of my day ones through high school where, uh, you know, we were, we were coding together and doing all that shit. And now, now that I moved on to something entirely different, we can still talk about that and, and kind of, I don't know, share a, a more meaningful connection, especially with when it comes to YouTube. I think people approach interacting with each other from a number on their head where, oh, you know, I, I don't know if I should talk to this guy. He's got three and a half million subscribers uh, when I only have, you know, 10,000 or, or something like that. And I think that's a hard barrier to break. And so for me, it's, it's finding, I guess, I guess more so maintaining the connections with, uh, actual regular people. And for me, it's, it's the people I met in high school who I continue to play 
open TTD with, which is a game that we all kind of latched onto from, from 1994, uh, which is just wacky shit like that. Open TTD. Yeah, what bro. Is that? It's a, it's a transport game that, um, I'm sure, you know, roller coaster tycoon. Yes. So yeah. that guy, before he went on to make the smash hit of the roller coaster tycoon series, it was the open TTD game that, uh, is just about transporting, uh, goods and, and, and passengers between towns and you build out the routes. And, um, to this day, it still has a development community, keeping it, um, alive and uh that's something we've s still been able to bond over what do you do to become an interesting person and and you and you can tell us ahead of time uh who you're answering as or or well, not we, or just go into yeah it. I mean, i'm just thinking i have a, a two-year-old and a 10-month-old asleep not too far from me in this room <laughs> <laughs> and how oh, hey it's time to grow up <laughs> that's right <laughs> time to learn what daddy does <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what makes what makes an interesting person damn motherfucker i've been worrying about this shit for a long time jack i'm like am i high or am i interesting god damn god damn the cocaine don't make you interesting your nose don't make you interesting the shit you say make you interesting jack <laughs> if you want me interested, you gotta be. And you gotta be a motherfucker that says, says shit. People are like, I don't know where he came up with that shit, but it makes sense. I think something along those lines. I think. Oh my god, that is a f insane question. Holy, f <laughs> that is. What is a what? Oh man, what makes a person interesting? I think I. I feel like generally the most interesting people that. I know have generally been through a lot, but are still very, um, I don't want to say necessarily optimistic, but have a, have a good or like a positive spin on most of the things that they've been through. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, generally speaking, like it's not interesting to me if someone's like, Oh, this tortured artist, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm like, I'm sad. And like, you know, everything's, everything's awful. Like, that's not interesting to me. What's interesting to me is, is somebody who's like, yeah, you know, I fucking uh, my family exploded when I was five. And so uh, yeah, I have a podcast, <laughs> you know, like that to me is a lot more interesting because it's just like I, th I just I find the I don't know, life is so brutal sometimes. And I feel like it's so easy to kind of fall into these uh, you fall into these kind of cycles of like, oh, yeah, maybe maybe things are really terrible. Um, but the most interesting people are the people who kind of like. Not make it worth it. Persevere. But I, I, I'm trying to. It's a, this is such an interesting question because now my mind's like racing in like a million different di directions. But I think what makes people interesting is generally like if they can if they can have some kind of positive or funny spin to a lot of the things that they've been through, be it, whether or not they're like fucking horrible or not. I th I think that's a, a mark of an interesting person. I think people doing whatever they want to do, regardless of like a lot of other people's advice like there's a lot of comedians like uh doug stanhope and and and, and you know people like that who like un conventionally you'd be like what the fuck is that or even people like bo burnham who like just does comedy in like a very very unique and interesting way that's you know not necessarily my favorite but it's like it's it's interesting that he's doing that at all people who are just people who can take mediums and kind of twist it to serve what they want to do are very very interesting to me whether it's animation comedy you know, acting, even, even YouTube, some of these people are like really incredible and interesting and just the amount of shit that they're able to do in such a short period of time and the, the organizational skill required and how inspiring that is. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't know if that's really an answer. Cause I just, I feel like there's so many ways to answer this, but, uh, no, I think it makes sense. Perseverance is a good trait to have. And also, uh, also, and also, I, I will also say, you. I will say, I like people that I, I, if I can't predict what you're going to say, I like that. A great question. One I've heard a few times at this point, and I've heard like three different people. Yeah, you didn't see no, this coming. I didn't. Did out of left field, I've heard like three different people be like, uh, "If they've gone through hardships and they're still nice," which is a great answer. But we've heard it enough, so I'm going to go a little bit of a different route. <laughs> um, what I'm mostly what I'm saying is your hardship means nothing, and I'm better. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I think to me, an interesting person, uh, at least in my experience, anybody I run into who seems genuinely interesting to me. Is somebody who has a drive um, 
to better themselves in some aspect. It, uh, you know, it could be career, it could be personal health, it could be, you know, in their relationships or something. Um, but if so, if I meet somebody who just clearly does not have a drive to improve in any way, in any aspect of their life, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not really interested in, yeah. in, in seeing more of that person. So to me, when I run into somebody who's like, I have X, uh, X, Y, Z as my career goals for 10 years from now, which I know I just gave a, you know, lukewarm answer on, but still, you know, the thought <laughs> is there. Um, that's interesting to me. If I see somebody who's like, yeah, I want to lose 10, 15 pounds by the end of the year. That's interesting to me. Um, I think a, a, a strive, because if you're not working to be the best version of yourself that you can be, what are you doing? Yeah. And I don't even, I think it doesn't matter at all what that pursuit is. I think you're right about that. Mm -hmm. It could be, I want to get in physical shape. It could be, I want to make sure I'm asleep by 10 PM every night. Yeah. I would actually be extremely interested in the day by day of somebody who said that because so many things can, can go wrong and keep you from doing it. Mm -hmm. If, if like, it would be a cool thing to follow, yeah. even though it's, it's really not a cool thing. Uh, but yeah, that's a really good point that it does not matter what somebody's into. They've got to be into something. They've got to be committed to something and taking it seriously. That's awesome. I have a very cliche answer. I want to try and make it sound a little more interesting. Um, I think it's, I, I think anyone that is willing to be wrong, like on a general sense, right? And I mean this, I mean this in the sense of it's really easy to like fall in line with like a certain like uh, ideology or a certain uh, uh, behavior whatever it is, but I think people that are, that are willing to be wrong and like kind of stand up for what they truly believe in because their gut is telling them that that's what makes really interesting people, or at least from my experiences, you know, those people you want to stick around and learn like what, what's going on here, mm -hmm. you know, fill me in. Mm -hmm. It's good. A little heterodox, never really <laughs> hurt anyone. Yeah. Not too much though. Not too Look much. Right? Don't, go, don't go too crazy with it. <laughs> not too much. Though. We do live in a society after all. <laughs> We have, we have a society we're trying to maintain after all. This is an interesting question. <laughs> how, how much time do I have to give my, uh, my answer? Four, 40, we'll 45 the, the minutes, Jeopardy an hour? No. I don't know. <laughs> I've, actually, I've never really thought about that. I think just somebody who, kind of like some of the topics we talked about earlier, like how you said, you always ask why. You're always looking for an answer. I feel like growing up, a lot of people, uh, not a lot, I, people would occasionally tell me, like my, my mom, she'd be like, oh, like you're, you're very, she would tell me I'm interesting. And I remember my answer was always, she's like, how do you, like, how are you so interesting? And I was like, she didn't say it like that, but it'd be like her, my grandma. <laughs> um, and my answer was like, I just kind of ask why. So I just read things like that. That was it. I just had a curiosity. So it would be mm -hmm. someone would mention a topic, they'd be like, you know, mentioning, I'm just thinking about this randomly, I would like a dishwasher. And I might be like, oh, actually, I was reading the other day about like, this weird, obscure thing. And they would interpret that as me being like an interesting person. But I think at the core of it, I was just kind of curious and reading about just random stuff. Um, so then I was able to just pull up just information that other people thought was interesting. And I don't know, mm -hmm. I, I at least that's one branch of it because obviously if you just have information that doesn't inherently make you an, an interesting person <laughs> but i no i like curiosity though that's yeah a good i feel answer. like that's the core of a lot of it wow that is a good question um i think life experiences and also uh like a unique personality someone who i don't know i think life experiences give someone interesting to talk about which then can make their perception of being interesting mm. um but what makes the person interesting is the question i don't know i think i think the way your outlook on life um and how you talk about those things uh if if you if it's different than say everyone else's or you know then that in itself can be interesting i don't know it's a really good question well um i don't know a good a good tip that a good tip that i had that i took from from somebody I was working with and just talking about like conversations is uh, when you're having a conversation with somebody be interested not interesting and meaning just like you know don't 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 try to force being interested like listen and learn 
And I think, I don't know, being an interesting person, I guess, um, I don't know, learn a skill, learn, be like, I don't know, like find a hobby, find something you're really excited about. Um, I think, I think for like, for a long, long time, I was like afraid to like tell anybody about like the fact that I, uh, it was a car enthusiast because I was afraid that nobody would, would care about that. And then somebody was like, no, that's like, that's interesting that, you know, like a lot about this thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I would say, don't try to be interesting for anyone else's sake. Just find the things that you're interested in and, uh, and share it with somebody that cares. I like that. I like that. Uh, we'd like to, uh, we like to encourage people to share their weird little hobbies and interests for sure all the time. Cause you never know who's going to be interested in it. But I also like the listener response because now that I'm thinking of it, some of the most interesting people I've ever met were astounding listeners, just very good present listeners. I think that there is something to that. If they're always kind of paying attention and listening, mm-hmm. they're absorbing information and, you know, you almost intrinsically become, you can't help but become interesting if you're always taking yeah. things in and paying attention. So that's be good. an active, like be an active listener. Don't just wait for your moment to speak. Uh, I think, I would, oh yeah, I guess one more thing, take an improv class. Cause that's where, like, that's where I learned to be a better, more active listener. I think improv is, is incredibly useful for, for anyone. I think number one is just to be curious about the world and want to want to find out whatever they can about the things in their life. Um, I, I think that curiosity is definitely the, that's it. I mean, I, I think that people who aren't curious about anything just aren't very interesting, if I put it that way. 